created our server and we've got an IP address. Now we want to log into it and start installing stuff. So in order to do that, let's copy our IP address and we can now use SSH to log in. We've already set up our SSH keys. So logging in is quite straightforward. You type SSH to invoke the command, and then you type the username that you want to log in as. Um, in Linux, an admin user is typically root. So we want the root account at the IP address. So let's just paste that in and give it a try. So you'll get this, um, I'd call it a warning message the first time you try to log into a server with SSH. And it's essentially saying that um, we have, haven't seen this computer before. Do you trust it? And I'm going to say yes. Um, so we've logged into the server now. We've just gotten the welcome screen. Um, you can see we're logged in as root at Django Tute. If we do host name, uh, you can see that we're Django shoot. And if I can remember this command, you can see that we're running Ubuntu 1804.3. LTS is like a long-term service. It means that it's um, sort of one of their stable releases. Okay, now that we're in, we can use all the regular bash commands that we've uh, played around with in git bash. We can see what current directory we're in with pwd, and you can see we've uh, logged in into the root directory, which is the home directory for the root user. So um, this is alias to squiggly. So um, if we do ls, there's nothing here. Um, so yeah, if we change directory to squiggly, we're in the same place, we're still in root because they're the same thing. Cool, um, and one thing I wanna show you before we get to installing things is uh, this whole thing with the SSH key. So if we look in the SSH folder on this computer, you can see there's this authorized keys folder. And if we have a look inside it, oh, come on. Uh, if we have a look inside of SSH authorized keys, uh, you can see it's the SSH key that I uploaded to DigitalOcean. So all they did when I gave them my SSH key when they started this computer was they put my key in this authorized keys file. Um, and I believe because it's in root SSH authorized keys, uh, that will allow me to log in as root. And if you set up a server and you create root SSH authorized keys and put an SSH key in there on its own line, um, you can then log into that server with SSH if uh, the SSH is configured properly otherwise on that computer. So now let's set it up. Um, the things that we need to run our Django app, we need Python 3 and we need pip, uh, the Python package manager to install the packages that we need. So let's see, let's have a look. Do we have Python? Uh, the Python, try to get to print the version. It says command Python not found. Well, that's bad. Um, but it says you also have Python 3 installed. You can run Python 3 instead. So let's give that a, a go. And there you go. We've got Python 3. We can drop into the Python interpreter if we want. Do some maths. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, or create syntax errors. What are we doing? One plus one is two. We can drop out of the interpreter. Um, and if you're interested, you can use which to find where Python 3 is installed. So Python 3 lives in user bin Python 3. And in addition to Python, we need pip, the package manager. So let's give that a go. Let's try pip. Command pip not found. Well, sometimes, especially using Python 3, uh, you'll have pip3 instead of pip. Let's try that. And that's not there either. So we're kind of screwed. So we have to install pip. Um, the way to do that is to use the Ubuntu package manager, which is very helpful for just installing like programs from the internet. So the Ubuntu package manager is apt. Um, let's have a look at that. And if you just type an apt, you get this nice little help dialogue. Apt is a command line package manager and provides commands for searching and manage it, blah, blah, blah. You can read that yourself. Um, and the syntax is pretty nice, um, apt install and 
what was it, Python 3, and let's give it a go. Right, and so our package manager, we've asked it to install pip so that we can install Python packages, and it's had a look around, and it says unable to locate package Python 3 pip, and it seems we're pretty screwed here because, like, it just can't find the package that we need. What can happen, especially on um, cloud servers, the new ones, is that your um, cloud server is booted up without a listing of the latest packages. So sometimes you need to update the list so that your package manager can find all the packages. And you do that with apt update. So we're going to run that. And you can see here it is just running through a whole bunch of um, places that it's checking to see uh, what packages exist. And you can actually add different, um, I can't remember what they're called, like repositories or something to this list to tell app to go check other places for packages. Um, and it also says here 118 packages can be upgraded. So in addition to finding out about packages that it never knew about, it's also finding out about potential upgrades. So now that we've run um, apt update, we're going to try our install again. So let's do, oh, what is it, apt install, uh, install Python 3 pip. Cool. Seems to be working okay. Um, it says we're going to use a quarter of a gig of disk space. And if you remember, we've got like 25 gig or something, so that's no big deal, but it'll ask you anyway. Do you want to continue? And you press enter and it's fetching all the data and installing all the stuff. Okay, we got there in the end. Um, so now we su successfully run our install, we should have access to pip3. There you go, pip3 is installed. We can use which as well to see where it's installed. Use a bin, cool. Um, and we can also try pip, and you can see there's nothing there, which is fine. We just need to refer to it as pip3. Um, the distinction between pip and pip3 is um, an annoying one. Uh, depending on how Python has been set up, there can be Python 2 and Python 3 installed on the same computer. Sometimes pip is for Python 2 and pip3 is for Python 3, but sometimes pip is for Python 3 instead, it becomes a real um, head fuck, so it's probably better that they just called it pip3. And um, one other thing we can do is just see what packages are installed. That's pip freeze, and these are all the Python packages that are available that aren't part of the standard library. Um, we've got a nice list with all their versions. And finally, to finish off this video, I'm just going to upgrade all the other packages that we can upgrade because um, maybe something, something security, not sure, but it's just something I like to do. Okay, it says it's going to use 165 megabytes of disk space. Sure. All right, it's been like two minutes and um, halfway through the upgrade, uh, we've gotten this crazy looking message in neon pink um, talking about grub, boot menus, something, something. Um, just press enter. Um, there are all these options and uh, this isn't something we really care about. Just do whatever keep the local version currently installed, that's fine, just press enter. And it pops up again, and just press enter. Um, unless you have an opinion about the version of your um, sort of bootloading software that you use, don't think about this, just press enter, it's fine. All right, so that took about three or four minutes, not sure. Um, but once you've done your upgrade, um, that's it, you're done. Your server is ready to go. Um, just go over it one more time. We have Python 3 installed, which we need. We've got pip, ooh, pip 3 installed, which we also need. And we're good to go. Uh, v doesn't work. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah, pip version 9.01. That's good. So, um, 
now that this is done, we can move on and start learning how to upload files, learning how to upload files to the server.